Hey all the fishermen and fishing ladies out there, Derek here from Raise Dry Fishing. Today we're going to learn how to build our own jigs. Stay tuned. Alright, welcome back. So like I said, we're going to learn how to tie our own uh, jig skirts today. So. What you're going to need is you're either going to need to go on fishingskirts.com, which is where I got all of these materials that you're fixing to see here, or you just need an old jig. Maybe the skirt fell off of it. Maybe it's old. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe it got pulled off and you lost it. Let's make a new one and you can keep using that same lucky jig that you've had for years. Okay? So. Fishingskirts.com, fantastic website. It's actually a little overwhelming how much they have on there. Now, don't get me wrong, it's laid out very nicely, but when I was going through to choose all my skirting material and even my jig heads that I got here, these are boss jig heads, it took me days, and I was actually on a deployment in Afghanistan, so I had the time, but man, it took me a long time to narrow it down to how what colors I wanted to get, because there's just a but a plethora of choices out there. So I decided to kiss. I decided to keep it simple, stupid. So I got my whites, I got my blacks, my browns, chartreuse. Um, I do have an orange in here just to kind of give it a little uh, uh, sunfish or a red breast profile if I want to make a, a swim jig like that. Um, and then I got some some in here that's got like little sparkles into it just to you know give it a little bit different appeal than maybe some of the on the shelf uh, jigs out there right now and that's kind of the advantage of doing this is one you can match the hatch match the forage match the, match the bait fish they all mean the same thing when you hear people talking about it you want to mimic whether it's a crayfish a bluegill brim yellow breast speckle perch uh, anything like that to fish with so, we focus the camera back down here. I'm going to show you how to tie the skirt real quick, and then we're going to go over some differences between the jig head styles. Maybe make your fishing more successful and less frustrating. Stand by. All right, so today we're going to make two jig skirts. Uh, the first one's going to be a little bit slower. Make sure you all know how to do it. And the second one is going to kind of get to it, make sure that we can drive home the fact that y'all are aware of how this process works. So the first one we're gonna make, I wanna keep it a little bit natural, but I'm gonna add a little flare of chartreuse in there because that can make all the difference, just that little bit of detail there. So we've got our skirt material, got our skirt collars, and then you got your jig heads, okay? So this first one, the natural one, I'm gonna put it on a, uh, a grass jig or a, or a jig head that is designed to go through grass better than the other ones, and I'll get into that after we make this. So the first thing you're going to notice is this little pencil thing here comes off. So if you get it in the package and it's off, slide that joker right there. Get your collar. You slide it all the way up there onto the shaft of the pencil there. All right. It's not an actual pencil, but you get the idea. And once you do that, you take your hook end of your tool and you're going to put it in the opposite direction and go out. So the hook is now going out the same way that the collar is. And then you just take your skirting material, you put the hook through the middle of it, and it's going to grab that tab that's on the, each end of those. And we're going to fix those tabs later. But you're just going to lay it on, okay? Uh, I would go no more than three, okay? Uh, it, one, it's really hard to pull it through the tube. And, and two, you just don't need it, especially if you're putting trailers on. It's just going to make it really bulky. Um, the, the more you use, the bulkier your bait is going to be, um, which is going to give it a slower fall and a bigger profile in the water. You're going to get more movement and stuff like that, especially if you're fishing rivers. So once you're, everything's on the hook, you're going to take it and you're just going to pull it on in halfway down, okay? Once you're about halfway, you just slide this collar down right onto the skirting material. Once that's done, pull your hook out, undo them, 
All right, now you have these tabs on the end, like I said before. Just give them a simple little, little clip. Both sides. And if you wanted to put the skirt on the jig before you cut these tabs off, go ahead. I know some dudes like to do that just so that they know how much to cut off to give it the profile that they want to while it's on the jig. Because some of your jigs are going to have, you know, different size hooks. And I just kind of pull these. Again, you can do this when it's on the jig. Just to make sure that all of the little strands are separated. And then if you need to, I've got this uh, collar just a little higher than I want it to. So if you just grab the side that you're pulling away from, you can actually roll or slide that collar down. Okay? So just because you put the collar on doesn't mean that it's set in stone. Alright, so that's kind of what it looks like when it's on the bait. So you set it up like that. Move your uh, weed guard out of the way. You slide the hook right in the middle of that collar. You slide it up on the hook. Now on these, these specific jigs, most of the same, you have a bait keeper and then you have a collar keeper. The collar keeper is the highest up on the head. You don't want to put your uh, skirt down here on the bait keeper. One, you're not going to have anywhere to put your trailer. Uh, two, there's nothing to catch it on the backside and your skirt will fall down on you. You can also add a dab of super glue up here if it's a color that you're really fond of or if you're mass making them like let's say black and blues and you're gonna make like five or six you put some super glue on there and that'll help the skirt from coming down either when you're fighting the fish or pulling it through brush and that's it man pretty simple so just kinda mess with these a little bit but they'll fix themselves in the water but that's it alright so this is only two full strands with just a little bit of chartreuse. This next one's going to be three strands and you'll see the difference in the profile. So for this one, we're going to do a black and blue special. Now the blue I'm using is a barbed wire uh, color that is on the uh, fishingskirts.com. I like it because it gives it a little bit of a less blue profile and there's also some blue fleck in there that it gives it a little bit of shine. But I'm going to try to mask a little bit of it by sandwiching it in between two blacks. Okay, So this one I'm going to have three on and it's because I'm putting it on a uh, three quarter ounce heavy cover flipping jig. So I wanted to give it that little, that bigger profile. Uh, it's also going to help that extra weight slow, just fall just a tad bit slower for me. So again, halfway down. And if you're a dumb dumb like me, you forget to put the uh, collar on. But we can do that real quick like. I'm going to use a red collar for this one. Because I can. Because it's my skirt. And that way if somebody out there, one of y'all steals my black and blue jig. Guess what? I'm going to know it's mine because it's got a red collar on it. Unless one of y'all start using red collars. Now there's no science to back this up, but I really like these red collars on my swim jigs. Uh, for me, it gives me confidence in the fact that it gives it a, a gill impression. So like if I'm doing a, a white and chartreuse or just a, a bluegill color one for my swim jigs, I like that red again there's nothing backing that up but I think that whenever I'm swimming it and then I stop and I let that skirt kind of flare up that it gives it kind of like that little that flash of inside the gills for the little bait fish like I say you do what you want to man like it's, it's all custom that's just something that I've grown to like and I've never had any negative effects from it while I was fishing but that's something that get like you know that's just an example of ways that you can customize your your skirting materials to be different so then I've got this I'll pull this the shield back the weed guard and I'll slide this all the way up again remember you slide it this is a different style jig head but it's still got the bait keeper and the collar keeper make sure you slide that all the way up the next to the head on the collar keeper okay that's a really good looking jig um, 
I really like this one. So now let's talk about different jig heads. I said we were going to do that. So for this one, the one we just made is a heavy cover jig. Uh, it's got a flat back to it. it. Does two things for me, and it's going to do two things for you. This, this flat head is going to uh, make a cavitation effect as it's falling in the water, and it's going to slow its fall. It's also going to give it a, a slight shimmy. A flat head also allows it to stand up on a bottom that's not necessarily flat. Okay, so as you can see, I'm putting it in different areas of my hand, and it's just it's still going to stand straight up. Okay, it's just like the bottom you're going to be fishing, unless you're fishing on concrete. So that's the benefit of that heavy cover jig right there with the flat bottom. Okay, it's going to have it standing straight up, and it's also going to give that hook a good 60 degree pitch. So when that fish comes and takes it, and you yank up that hook's gonna bury right in the top of that fish's mouth and that's exactly what you want okay that's the that's where you want to hook a fish if you can if you have the ability to is right in the top of the mouth okay now this one the first one we made is a grass jig like I said jig head and this one's pretty round it's got like a teardrop shape um, and that just helps it slide through that grass a little bit better without getting hung up or fouled up there's another style of jig head called the football jig head I don't have one with me dang it but it's, it, it looks 100% like a football, but if you see how this one is teardrop or oval shaped, but it's in line with the shank of the hook, the football is going to sit out here on the sides, okay? It's going to go perpendicular to the shank of the hook or the shaft of the hook. Now, you do not want to use that style for grass, okay? This is for grass. A football head through the grass is like dragging a bulldozer through the bottom okay it's absolutely painful to fish because every time you bring it up you're gonna be pulling crap off of it okay it's not designed for that a football head is designed for a hard bottom rocky bottom that that wide profile you know when the hooks going this way as you're dragging along the bottom it keeps the bait upright instead of like this if I were to start just dragging it on the bottom there's nothing keeping this bait from rolling and then just going to the side, okay? Especially under rocks, or over rocks, excuse me. If you're fishing under rocks, you're doing something pretty cool. But over rocks, so that's what a football head is designed for. It's not designed for grass. Sure, you can fish it in grass, but like I said, it's gonna be frustrating, and you're not gonna wanna keep using it. And, you know, the, the easier bait is to work, the more you're gonna wanna use it, and the more fish you're gonna catch off of it, okay? Then you have what's called an arky head. And again, these are just basic. There's dozens of different heads out there. Um, and you can modify these even to something that's not even made yet. So have fun with it. But an Arky head is, is, a, is a flatter profile of the teardrop. I really, really like these baits uh, or these heads because it's very versatile. All right. So I can use this as a swim jig, a swim, you know, a swimming bait. I can use it as a, a flipping bait. I can use it in grass. Uh, but my favorite way to use it is flipping or uh, skipping under boat docks or skipping up under trees and stuff. This this flatter and round profile makes this thing skip excellently, like super nice. If you get one that's kind of like this, yes, it's flat on the back, but it's got almost a, a 90 degree point on each side. And what that does is when I go to skip it, if I don't hit like directly on the bottom here, it causes that thing to roll. What that does is gives me a backlash and pisses me off. So, yes, you could skip this, but this is a lot easier to skip, which means I'm going to get more casts, you know, for my time on the water than messing with backlashes and whatnot. So that's that's what an Arky head's great for. Uh, your swim jigs, again, I gave them all to Cole. So if y'all want to see a swim jig, hit up Cole on Facebook or uh, comment below this video because he's got all my stuff since I'm up in Alaska and I can't bass fish. But a swim jig is, is I would tell people that's my favorite lure in my entire tackle box. And again, I gave it all to him because <sighs> whatever. But he's got them. And it's it's a inline like a bullet weight sinker. on the fr That's what the jig head looks like. It looks like a Texas rig bullet weight style. And it's just got a line tie on it, you know, and I love those. 
Um, and then you've got a finesse jig head. It's just a, a really small, it's a 3 16 ounce. Um, these are great for when the bite is tough. All right, so if, if it's like either the winter or dead summer when the fish are just lethargic, all they want to do is sit on the couch and eat tater chips because that's you know all we want to do. Maybe watch some football if you're into that stuff, American football. Ooh. Drop this little tater chip in front of them while they're just minding their own business. And more often than not, they're going to take it, okay? Because it's not a huge bait. They don't have to fight for it. It's going to be easy for them to capture, easy for them to swallow. There's really no downside to it. So this will work all other uh, instances as well. Those are just two of the instances that I have had very good luck with it, okay? Now you've also noticed maybe while I was showing these that there's different line ties. So this is a horizontal tie where the tie point is actually perpendicular to the hook shank similar to the football head like I was I was telling you about these are great for uh, stand-up presentations the football jig has this type of a line tie um, it's a great hook set and you don't you're not very rarely moves on this uh, eyelet because if you get a knot over here and you go to set the hook you're gonna roll your roll your jig head and you you may get the fish but you're not increasing your hookup ratios to the best of your ability by having a knot that's not where it's supposed to be. Um, these, the, the vertical or the inline ties are great for swim jigs and they're great for grass because it, it, in an essence, it's, you know, kind of squirms its way through the grass there. Whereas these can pick up grass and you'll, you'll get pieces that are just hanging off left and right. These don't do that as much. Yes, you can still get that. The thing you got to keep in mind with these is the line tie, like I was saying. If you get your knot rolled all the way up here by the brush guard and you go to set the hook, who knows where your, your hook point's going, okay? Uh, not to mention, you're now putting a lot more stress on the single point of the knot than distributing the stress of the hook set through the knot, the line, the pole, okay? So... Just keep in mind when you're when you're reeling these up before you cast again. All right, all right, y'all. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, jigs are arguably one of the most versatile lures, if not the ver most versatile lure that a fisherman can have when you're talking about bass fishing. Okay, um, get to know these baits. There's so many different ones of them. You, you can spend years just trying to figure out each one. Okay, Denny Brower himself said that he hasn't learned everything about jigs. And he's one of the all time greats and has been doing this for a long, long time, okay? Get to know these baits. They're gonna catch you fish, stick with them, all right? They can be frustrating at times, getting weeds off or backlashing when you're trying to skip. Stick with it, learn these things and tie your own skirts, man. Like between your spinner baits, your buzz baits, your jigs, uh, you can even tie one of these skirts and put it on a punch rig, okay? It doesn't have to just go on a, on, a, on a regular traditional jig head. Get creative with it. Learn your colors. Learn the forage that's in the lakes and ponds and reservoirs and streams and lake rivers that you're fishing and match it. It's going to help, I promise, okay? I'm Derek from Raised Rock Fishing. Please subscribe. Please like. Please leave a comment. We love hearing from y'all. If you haven't started to, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Deuces.